Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Claudia and this is Catching Claudia. I interviewed Nardine Calda. She's an expat in Spain and we talked about her experience there. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I hope you enjoy the interview. Halfway to Mexico, halfway to Tokyo, on this open road. Catching Claudia, we have a guest, um, Nardine. Is that how you pronounce your name? Yes, that's how you say it. Nice. Right. So, um, I guess first, since you did say you didn't want to plug anything, um, if you do want to just introduce yourself and tell me where you're from, where you, um, why you decided to move to Spain, we can just start there. <laughs> okay, so I'm good. So my name is Nardine Caldas. Uh, I was actually born and raised in Cairo, Egypt. And yeah. then I moved to the States uh, when I was 14 years old. I like first lived in New York City in Queens. And then I moved to a small town in Illinois called Effingham. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the only reason we moved there is because my uncle had lived there for like 30, 40 years. And he's like, yeah, come here. It's cheaper. It's also like easier to navigate than New York City, which honestly, I found New York City was harder, was easier to navigate than Effingham, Illinois. <laughs> Really? Yeah, just because uh, like Effingham, Effingham, Illinois is such a small town. And like, mm. you know, I have my aunt on one side. It's just okay. Like everyone knows you. Like you are the niece of a very important surgeon in the town. So you have to act a certain way. You have to, like, if you do something bad, the whole town is going to know about it. And like, you need to be nice to these people, but don't talk to these people. It was just a lot of, I don't know, mannerisms that I had to follow. Mm. And I just did not like that. Yeah, that makes sense. So I guess this actually makes it way more interesting. So what was it like moving from um, Cairo to the United States at 14? So it was for sure a culture shock because in Egypt, I went to a French school, like an only girl school from pretty much kindergarten to, so I, I moved before my freshman year of high school. And so I moved into New York and it was my first, like my first day in Queens uh, in high school with wow. boys because I mean I, I mean I knew boys but it's just like I never went to school with them before so it was like ah, you know you're 14 too so it just it's, it was a whole yeah. bit it's, it was for sure scary because I go into the school there's cops there's metal detectors oh, wow. there has had been multiple fights and just like okay this is not what I'm used to but we're just gonna go through but it was actually was pretty nice I made one of my really good friends that I made from what that one year was also an immigrant that had came from Myanmar or Burma so we really connected on the fact that we had just moved to the U.S. this past summer and that just like really made it the friendship pretty strong we're actually still in contact now it's pretty That's nice really cool so um when did you finally feel adjusted to being in the United States so actually, I would say it happened pretty fast for me because I don't know exactly when, but like I've, I had friends like walking down the hallways, I'd like say hi to random people. And I think that was actually like thinking about this recently. I, I'm just, I get, I, I adapt to new environments pretty easily. Like, yeah, there was that shock at first, but now I was like, okay, like there's nothing else for me to do, but to, to try and adapt. So I think that just like that switch flipped and it was just like easy for me, I guess. Really, really, um, that just seems like a very interesting experience because 14 is very pivotal, I feel like. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's, sure. I don't even know if I could have done that. So that's really cool. Um, so what made you decide to move to Spain or even you said that you studied abroad. So what made you decide to study abroad in Spain? So as a little girl, my school had always taken these trips because uh, when I was in Egypt, I went to a French school. So they always took these trips to Paris, but my family could never send me to them just because we couldn't afford it. And like, I mean, I was OK with it. It was never mad. But it was I've really always wanted to go to Europe. But then I went to high school in New York and then I could only learn Spanish as a second language. The French wasn't offered. So I was like, OK, I'll do Spanish. And I, I liked it. I started good and get good at it. And then. I went, when I moved to Effingham, uh, I had to also take Spanish. I tried to see if they had French, but it was a pretty small school. 
So it was only Spanish that was offered. And so I started taking the classes. My teacher was like, okay, Nardine, like your accent is pretty good. Like you should really get going with this. And so when I went to college, I minored in Spanish. Wow. And so coincidentally, all of my teachers, all of, yeah, my teachers in, uh, for Spanish classes in college were from the Basque country. And had also friends who had studied abroad in Bilbao. So they're like, go to Bilbao. I was like, okay, don't need to think about this more. I'm going to Bilbao. <laughs> so, and so, oh, sorry. Go ahead. go ahead, sorry. And so I went to Bilbao and I loved it so much. And I knew I always wanted to go to Bilbao because I knew I didn't want to go to Madrid or Barcelona just because of how big they are. And I knew it would be overwhelming and I might not get to actually experience Spain because like, you know, living in such big cities, it's just kind of hard to navigate or like you just end up, you know, hanging out with the program, friends, and just maybe not get to actually know Spain and only do the touristy stuff. So I was like, I wanted to do Bilbao. And so I lived with the host family as well, which was very helpful for my Spanish. Did you, um, so did they also speak Basque? I know, what is it called in Spain? Pai yeah, Basque. it's Basque, yeah. Yeah, they, they speak also... Basque, yeah. Wow. So in cool. Bilbao, actually they don't. So you probably know this from living in the Valencian community, but it's usually the bigger cities where they don't speak like, like Valencia, for example, doesn't speak in the center, they don't speak Valenciano very much. In Bilbao is the same case. They don't speak Basque as much, but once you go to the smaller towns outside of Bilbao, yeah, that's a lot of Basque. So like we learned a couple of words here and there, but I never really had to interact with someone that only spoke Basque. And how long did you stay, a semester or um, did you just the summer? It was a semester, yeah. So I went in the spring of 2018. So from January to May. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. um, so did you get to experience those smaller cities or towns outside of um, Bilbao then? Yeah, so actually I was pretty lucky in that my host family took me in and then every Sunday we would do, as you know, like the Spanish family dinner. So we, her, her father, my host, my host mom's father lived in a small town outside of Bilbao. So one time we drove there, they had a birthday party for him. It was, it was so much fun actually. And so I got to visit the smaller towns, but never really got to interact with the people there. Okay. Was, yeah. Like we, our, our program took us on a trip to some of the smaller towns outside of Bilbao. So we got to, you know, learn more about the smaller towns, but never really got to interact with the people. Unfortunately. So then you went, you went back to the United States graduated I assume yeah and then so what made you decide to move officially to Spain okay so actually that was deciding to move back kind of happened unexpectedly so it all started actually we got back so I got back in the summer before my senior year of college and so it, that September the program director from Bilbao had come back to our university just to like tell more students about the program in Bilbao. And like he was doing kind of a tour of universities in the States, just to encourage students to go to Bilbao. And so he apparently, he this, those are his words, but we were his favorite program <laughs> that he semester. And so he came back and then we went out for a drink with him and he was like, he had like all this money and was just like flashing it around. He was, he's, he's an interesting guy. <laughs> and so me and my friend uh, were talking just about like our experiences with career fair and kind of dreading it and just like dreading looking for jobs in the United States. And just also the fact we both knew that just, we weren't ready for that step yet. And so he told us about the Ox program. Mm -hmm. And so me and my friend were like, wait, tell us more. He's like, you just need to apply. It's first come, first serve. You need a letter of recommendation. And all you really need to do is just like choose your regions. You don't have to do that much paperwork for it. And so me and my friend was like, okay, send us the information and we'll do it. So like a week later, my friend came over, we looked over the program and that we saw we couldn't apply until January. So we like set a reminder on our phone. And we're like, once the application opens, we're applying. <laughs> And so we ended up applying when we were applying together, you, like you might know this as well. They ask for like a pareja question. Mm -hmm. So me and my friend were like, okay, we're not partners. And then we just kept going through the program. I mean, the application and we were like, wait, 
should we apply as partners anyways? Why not? And so we got placed together in Creviente and the Valentin community. Wow. Um, so yeah, that happened with um, Amber and all of us. We just ended up putting everyone's name up there and seeing if we got placed in the same region and it worked out. So um, what was, what do you think were the biggest differences in what you said, what area in, it was in Alicante, right? Yeah, so it was in the Alicante province of the Valencian community. Okay, okay. It was a, a very small town called Creviente, like it's a 30 minute drive just by car, but the commute was an hour and a half. And so was that south of Alicante or north? It was uh, west, like oh, west, okay. southwest. So it was inland, yeah. So uh, mountainous or um, I so, guess- yeah, there were mountains around it, but it wasn't really on a, on, on a mountain or anything. It was just like inland. Yeah, there's mountains around it, but it wasn't mountainous. It was pretty flat, pretty smooth. It wasn't, I think it was 30,000 uh, for the population. Wow. So, um, yeah, pretty small. Um, I believe where I was placed, I want to say, yeah, 20,000 people, 20, um, which was definitely a shocker, but I was glad that they placed me there because I was, I didn't really want to be right in the mountains. I thought that would be a, a yeah. lot for me, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, let's see, I have some questions. Wait, how far away was your commute then from Benidorm? So it was like 20 minutes, not even really. It was um, pretty short. So I had, a, um, I rode in a carpool situation. So they picked me up from kind of a couple streets over from my apartment. And then we got on the interstate and drove, I want to say maybe 15 minutes, very um, small town. Um, it was really nice. I had the um, pricing been cheaper, I would have, um, I would have, oh my gosh, I'm, yeah, I would have maybe lived there, but um, it wasn't any cheaper. So I was like, Benidorm has the train station, it has the um, buses, it has, things are open on the weekend. So I guess I'll just live here, even though it's not exactly the Spanish experience I was looking for, but yeah. Yeah, no, I feel you because just kind of like, you don't want to be stuck in a small town and not be able to do anything. Like, you know, you also still want to have fun. <laughs> Yeah, my big, the biggest draw was the fact that we have the bus station, so we could just hop on, go to Valencia for the weekend, or go to Alicante, um, but yeah, so let me see. So tell me about the difference between being an auxiliar pre-COVID versus right now, which is, I guess, during COVID. COVID. Yeah, pre-COVID, it was really good. I got to live with my friend who we applied together. And then we actually, uh, the way I met, we met our third roommate was that there was like, you know, like the big Alicante group chat of all the oxes mm -hmm. coming in. And so I was introducing myself. I was like, hey, my name is Nardine. I'll be placed in Creviente, but wanting to live in Alicante. And so this one girl like replied to my message and she was like, oh, like, hey, my name is Lindsay. I'm also gonna um, also working in Creviente, but living in Alicante. If you have any questions, let me know. And so I slid in her DMs. I was like, actually, I have a question. Do you wanna live together? Oh, <laughs> and she said, yes. And so we, I'm actually living with her again this year. And so we're, we're, re like, we're really good best friends and actually Amber as well knows her. So like we're all friends here. But so we, all three of us lived together. We had not met her before, me and my friend Dylan but we were like, let's just do it. We met each other, the vibes were right. Like we were just like, we went to uh, have a drink at a beach, at the beach in Alicante. And we just like, we're sitting in comfortable silence. We were like, this is it. Like, this is, this is it right here. And so uh, the upcoming weekend, me and Dylan, our other roommate, we get to go to um, meet and greet just between the other oxes at this Colombian restaurant. And we meet a couple of people there. Those people end up being our family, pretty much. Oh, and so cool. we were like doing everything together, just always together, just doing everything together, pretty much. And so, you know, we were going through it, just kind of like we did a, a bit of traveling. So uh, when I studied abroad, my roommate Dylan as well, my friend had also studied abroad 
in the same program and that's how we met and so we kind of didn't want to travel as much we just kind of get, wanted to get to know Alicante more and stay in and so we did maybe two three trips before COVID happened so not that many we went to Granada with Dylan's mom and me and Lindsay went to Budapest and Prague for um for Christmas and so you know we were able to just kind of to, to do a bit of traveling, but also just kind of, you know, get to know Alicante, hang out with our friends. And so COVID happened, which we weren't expecting at all. And so uh, our friends, because they were from Australia and New Zealand, the borders were closing back home, so they had to go home. So one day we all wake up, we like, we all thought we were gonna do lockdown together. I mean, you couldn't really do it together, but like, you know, be in it together. Mm -hmm. And so one day they were like, we're going home. And so we were like, wait, everyone's going home? Uh, okay, we're still gonna stay. But then two days after they were leaving, we were like, should we stay? Like, even once we get out of this, we're not gonna have, you know, like our people, like it just wasn't worth it for us anymore. And so we decided to go back uh, to the States, which was a good decision just because the lockdown went from two weeks, as you know, into what, two? Three, two and a half months. So long. It, um, I was definitely glad that I went home too, just because mm -hmm. that was a serious lockdown. I mean, that was. No, they did it. They did the right thing. They did what they were supposed to do. But sure. going from being in that lockdown versus going home, I was like, I'm free, <laughs> like America. <laughs> um, just because we could drive down the road or something, even if we didn't get out of the car versus, I, I don't know about in Alicante, but they were t they basically were like, if we see you on the streets, you're getting a fine unless you're at the grocery store. So I was like. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's just like the fact, you know, we couldn't take a walk even. You couldn't just go for a walk. Like you have to be pretending or actually if you're going to the grocery store, you know? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we had to pretend we were going to the grocery store just to say goodbye to our friends, you know, but. <laughs> yeah, um, and it was serious. It was super serious. And I mean, like I said, they did the right thing, um, <laughs> but I, I, it was just intense. I feel like that second week because we held out, our, group, our friend group held out for about two weeks, but um, I just found myself getting pretty sad. It was like at eight o'clock, people would be playing music on the balcony, clapping. And clapping, and I was like, oh, this is so nice. And then it was over. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm stuck in the house. Just, yeah, so I can't even see the park next door. Um, I can only see my grocery store was right next to my apartment. So it was like I could see people at the grocery store as my entertainment. But other than that, I was like, I've watched Elite. I've done this. I don't think I can do this any, anymore. But um, no, yeah, it was it was rough because like I remember like the day before lockdown started, we had went to a to like, you know, like the chinos here to like, we brought our supplies and all these things we were like, that's what we're gonna do for those two weeks. And then we we're like, well, I think it's gonna be more than two weeks guys. And then everyone was going home. We're like, okay, let's go home. Yeah, so what did you think your experience, how's it differing um, being, having, not having COVID, but with COVID going on now versus teaching without it? So teaching specifically, you don't realize how hard it's going to be until like you go to school for the first day and you're wearing your mask and the kids just like can't see how you're pronouncing and it just like it makes it difficult in those ways like mm -hmm. also like you don't really think about it because teaching before COVID like you can just plan whatever game you know and that's that's fine that's it but now with like play, planning activities or games you have to run it by my tutoras or like a director just to make sure it's COVID safe. Mm, wow. And like at my school too, they're like taking it pretty seriously. So that's pretty good. But they have every student six feet apart. Everyone has their masks on, not, not the infantile kids, not like the little kids, but first through sixth graders have to be like their tables are six feet apart. And if they're in a classroom, they can't really be together. And even during like recess during patio time, like each class has to stay in their area and can like mingle with other classes wow. so they're taking it pretty seriously which is good but it's just like a lot of activities you can't do like especially for the holidays there wasn't there was a lot of games we couldn't play just because of covid 
like if you're like gonna bring in a snack you have to be very careful it's just actually no you couldn't bring food at all mm-hmm. and so and especially just because like for my school this school especially it's better for them to play games and have activities rather than presentations which went well with my school last year because the school I'm working at right now the levels are pretty low so they need games they need activities just kind of to stimulate so we're already pretty limited in that regard with teaching. Do you think that has um, made your experience more negative or are you seeing um, still some positivity in doing it even with the COVID restrictions? No, honestly, I have been loving it. I'm getting very attached to the kids, which I know I'm already thinking about the end. I'm like, okay, this is going to be sad. But yeah, I'm very, getting very attached. And actually, it's, it's just allowed for like more room for creativity. Like, okay, this game would be fun, but how do we make it COVID edition? Or like, what should we do that will get the kids excited about learning or like get the kids to understand this uh, material better than just like, you know, going through the book. And so no, for sure it has being here in Valencia during COVID has not been negative at all, even though right now bars and restaurants close at 6 p.m. We have a 10 p.m. curfew. You can have that many people. But at one period in January and February, restaurants and bars were closed. Like you couldn't, you can I mean, take away, but that's it. But I found me and my friend, Lindsay, my roommate as well, we found ourselves, you know, tapping into more hobbies. Like I bought a longboard. She has been, she has roller skates and roller blades. So, we, you know, we do more wholesome things like color. We color, we had a painting night once with, uh, for one of our other roommates birthday we paint and just kind of do, you know, play cards and just get to have fun in different ways. Go, we have been spending a lot of time at the park and outside. So, I mean, yeah, in one regard, it kind of sucks, you know, with curfew and restaurants and bars were closed and now they're open, but they closed pretty early, but we are still able to just enjoy Valencia in a different way. I feel like now that the bars and restaurants are open, I'm finding myself doing things like skating less or painting less or maybe going to the park less just because you know so if I feel like if I didn't have the experience of being in Valencia during COVID I would have not had to you know go into these hobbies and I guess discover more about what I like doing and what I don't like doing so that's been nice yeah that sounds really fun actually um so have they opened up where you guys can leave on the weekends now or um, is that still a hindrance? So after, it was pretty serious up until February, no, sorry, March 1st, where you couldn't leave your city on the weekends, but now you can, but you still can't leave your region. So I can't leave the Valencian community. Like, yeah, so technically those are the restrictions. People still leave the community and like let's say go to Madrid but it's just kind of like a fact and like I don't want to risk it like you know I've been to Madrid I don't need to see Madrid again or it's just I'm okay with staying inside the community for now but really waiting for it to open just because once the summer hits I want to be able you know just to travel a bit and see a bit more of Spain. Yeah so um where have you been in the region that you've liked the best so far? So we I've since I've been in Spain this time around, I've been to Altea mm, okay. three different times. And you, if you've been three times, you like it then? I do like it. So because the first time we just went to explore Altea because I've never been. And then the second time our friends, one of a few of our friends who had stayed from last year, we had like a little reunion. We had like rented an Airbnb, it was super nice. And then the third time me and my two roommates, we went for an Airbnb in Altea, just okay. kind of to change scenery. And then we went on a very cool hike as well in Altea. I don't know, have you been to Altea? Yeah, so that was the next town over from Alfas. So oh, okay. I was disappointed when I left because I felt like I was finally comfortable to start doing things by myself. Mm-hmm. And I was really getting comfortable getting on the tram and going Mm -hmm. to Altea after school, going to Mm -hmm. um, our beach town, um, Albir. Um, So that was really cool, but um, Altea is gorgeous. And I feel like it's one of those places that obviously other people from here, you know, they're thinking Madrid, Barcelona, maybe even Valencia, but they're not thinking 
of these little tiny towns that just have so much character and are so beautiful. So yeah, no, I really sure. was so grateful once I found out I was placed in that particular section because it's gorgeous. And um, even there are more places, I think, that on that little, I guess, the coast that mm -hmm. are just so gorgeous. Denia is beautiful. And they yeah. just all have a different little vibe, which I really was glad that I got to do right before I left. And hopefully if I visit again, um, I'll go back to those areas because I feel like they're places I want to show people. No, for sure. And Altea is definitely one of them. Um, like, honestly, if someone was like, hey, let's go to Altea for the first time, I'd be very down. Just, it's, it's very cute. And it's just like, it's because, you know, it has like the grease look, you know, it's all white building. It's just kind of like, just cute so like I for sure would want to go back again beautiful <laughs> um so I don't think we talked about what made you decide to go back to Spain after coming to the United States um for COVID uh, after COVID yes yeah. so when so like I said like we made a pretty tight-knit family last year in Alicante and so four of us we decided to come back together so me Lindsay and also our third roommate her name is Emily which was also like one of our, you know, we were, we were all in the family last year. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, one of our other guy friends who him and Lindsay were, were seeing each other. And so we were reapplying together in February before lockdown happened and before everything. And so me and Emily applied as partners and then Lindsay and our friend Nico applied as partners. So we're like, we're coming back. Nico unfortunately didn't come back with us just because for him in New Zealand, life is just, so much better like I don't know if you've heard but they're having festivals they don't need yeah. to wear masks they're just living their life they're, it's pretty much COVID free over there so lucky <laughs> so, really and so for him, he wanted to focus you know on different aspects and just coming for him coming back to Spain was did, just didn't make sense for where he saw himself and where he wanted to be and so me Lindsay and Emily we came back together just because it's like we don't care what's happening. Like we didn't get, I feel like I wasn't done with Spain from last year because before COVID happened, I was planning on having Alicante just being my one year. Mm -hmm. But when I came back to the States, I was like, I'm not done yet with Spain. I really wanted to come back. And also I knew that just Spain during COVID is still better than being home in Effingham with maybe more freedoms, but it's still Effingham, Illinois, a town now. Not the, not the biggest fan of in the first place. I definitely feel you there. <laughs> um, so um, what do you, what would you say to someone who wants to study, uh, not study, well, study abroad, but also move abroad? What would you say to them about it? No, 100% do it. If that's something you've been thinking about, do it. Like we have met so many friends here who have worked in the United States for like 10, 15 years and just was like, I'm done like I need to come just like you, you you are working so it's like you have something you know during the day to do but you also have all this free time to be able to explore some of your hobbies meet cool people from all over the world just you know get to know yourself more and just get get to see a different way of living and I think traveling abroad but also living abroad specifically like you get to kind of like switch a different part of your brain on you just have to you know I have to go to doctor's offices and speak in Spanish talk about my symptoms in Spanish mm -hmm. and like you have to figure out how to live independently in a different country away from your family not even in a different state it's just like experiences that you'll never get to do back in your home country just because of like you know living in a different country and like for anyone just like who has a thought just a thought about living abroad and not just traveling abroad like do it like I know it's easier said than done especially if you've been you know in a routine back home you know you've got a job you've got your circle of friends you know you've got the family it's kind of hard to leave that but if that thought has ever crossed your mind like please follow through with that thought because it might be might be the best decision of your life no guarantees but also guaranteed <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely good advice. Um, I think that's all that I have. Uh, do you have any questions for me, I guess? Yeah, no. What What made you decide to want to live here, like do this program? Honestly, I feel like Amber Fritz played such a role because <laughs> I always wanted to study abroad originally, but I was scared 
Um, but then Amber chose to go to Spain. And my mom was saying, if I were going to study abroad, that I need to go somewhere that speaks Spanish because honestly, she's been trying to make me fluent since I was a little kid. And I just, I don't know, it never clicked for me. So um, yeah, so I was like, okay, well, they're going to Spain in this summer, I guess I'll go. Mm -hmm. So I applied, I did the um, second session in July in Granada. Ooh, that was just such an amazing experience. I didn't even really know what to expect. I'd never really thought about going to Spain in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it was like a very um, just shocking, exciting experience having mm -hmm. to walk to school um, in this beautiful town with these beautiful mountains and the people were so nice. And I was just like, I love it here. So that's what made me study abroad there. And then I applied to the program, um, kind of like you, how you were saying, you mm -hmm. looked at it and it wasn't open yet. I was thinking about it, it wasn't open, totally forgot about it. Then one day I was on campus talking to Amber and she was like, did you apply to the program? I think you should do it, something, something. I was like, uh, yeah, I guess I should apply. So I just <laughs> applied um, because it was on my mind before. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't put her as my partner or anything, I just kind of put Valencia as the region and ended up getting placed in Alfaz del P, which was gorgeous. Um, but I was still scared because um, Amber and our other friend got placed um, in Elche, that area. Yeah, so Amber got placed a little bit outside and the other friend got placed in Elche. So I was like, that's still over an hour away. I'm super scared. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Then our other friends that Amber had convinced to apply, one of them put my name on her application and she got placed in a town over from me. So I was like, at that point, okay, um, I'm never going to have this opportunity where I'm going to a foreign country um, and I have some of my closest friends in the same region that's just kind of unheard of so I was like I have to go there's no there's no way I can't go and it was a crazy experience I mean definitely obviously culture shock again because I think there's a difference between studying abroad having that host family and kind of that little built-in support system versus not and so that was definitely um a difference but I got used to it and then yeah, I think the only thing that kind of made it a downer at first was just the payment issue. The um, Yeah, that just kind of made it um, a little frustrating, but it was still a great experience. I was like, I love being in Spain. I love the public transportation. I love that I can go to different towns. Mm -hmm. Loblo car is amazing. Blah, blah, it was like, there's all of these amazing ways to get around. Mm -hmm. And they're so cheap and just like, I was just like, this is amazing. So I just, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I got to do it before COVID. I was actually kind of thinking maybe throwing in an application, I'm a little bit late now, but throwing in an application for next year or something. But um, yeah, it was just, I'm glad I got to do as much as I did get to do while I was there. I still really haven't seen Madrid. I've only been in and out of Madrid. I haven't actually explored it but um so that's something I still want to do and I still want to do Barcelona because it closed the weekend I was supposed to go to Barcelona um so I I feel like I'm not done with Spain either I'm gonna have to go back and just check those boxes I meant to check mm -hmm. last year but yeah um that's really I guess my journey with the country no that, that's pretty cool like because also like you got to study abroad but also just like the fact it was like on the back burner and then Amber was just like, do it. And they're like, you know what, why not? And you just kind of went with it. you like, yeah, like even though you had studied abroad, but also like didn't know if the experience was going to be the same. Oh, wait, sound just went out. Okay. Sorry, just say that last part again. Yeah, just like the fact that you had already experienced studying abroad, but like you knew that it was going to be different, but you still went, it, went for it anyways. I feel like just following through with that, even though you weren't 100% sure about it, that's just like, you know, and then it was like still being like a really good experience. Like, that's yeah, pretty cool. Definitely. Just like following your gut. 
it was a life-changing experience. I'm glad that I did it. And I agree with what you were saying. It's just one of those things. If you have the little thought to do it, just go. You might, um, maybe it's, you know, diff- things are a little different. I mean, for me, the fact that in Spain, the majority or most people, obviously, well, everyone speaks Spanish, but also the other languages that are in the country. I found that so fascinating and just something that I knew about, but I being in it, like it being in Valencia firsthand, hearing Valenciano and then also hearing Spanish. And just because I'm in school hearing them speak both, I'm picking up on both too. Yes. And it's like, wow, this is crazy. I don't know. So it was just an amazing experience. And yeah, I w- would recommend it for anyone to go to that dream country that you want to go to. Mm-hmm. Check it off your list. <laughs> just like, go for it. And like, what do you got to lose? Even if it's, you know, a shit experience, you did it anyways. You like, you said you would do it and you did it. You like, you lived, you like went there. I mean, and you're probably going to learn so much if it was, but that's like, what, a rare case? I'm not sure. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you doing this last minute again. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.